Have you ever wanted to be an overpowered main character who goes on a journey with their party members to fight the monsters and the demon lord? Probably not. But wouldn't it be cool to be in one? Maybe that's still a no. But this isn't exactly the case for our MC and Eminence in the Shadow. Meet our main character, Sid, an average looking guy with average grades who's just living life as a background NPC character. But in secret, he wants to be the man who fights justice in the shadows. Like look at this, he dresses up in all black and calls himself the stylish Rufian Slayer. He fights off this ex-military man with the power of plot armor and two crowbars, he wins and saves a girl. However, he wanted to be even more stronger, so what do you know? He gets hit by a truck and gets reincarnated. First time anyone? And now this is where the real story starts. You see the MC gets reincarnated and you expect him to be a bit more popular. He starts training, he goes find the guild members and goes on an adventure. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. That doesn't quite happen. Sid doesn't even care about the MC life. He just wants to live like an average NPC life and be the hero in the shadows. He role plays as a weak fragile human who wants to enjoy the NPC lifestyle than being the limelight of attention. Little does he know. Even if he ever wants to live as a NPC background character, whatever that is, he's still going to be the MC and we're just going to be living in his world. And even though that happens, some of the stupidest yet luckiest moments happen in the anime that I can't even fathom. In the beginning, he finds his monster goo and experiments on it. Turns out it was a female the whole time. So he saw it as a perfect opportunity to double down on his roleplay just to gaslight her on a story that he just forged in his head, making her actually believe the story and turns out it was true the whole time. And this doesn't happen once. He goes out trying to do everything he can to complete his NPC bucket list. He will go ask a girl out on a date in hopes that he will get rejected and use one of his 48 techniques to be defeated by a strongest girl at the school by acting out that he was struggling to stand up and not give up. And he even sacrificed himself to protect her. Turns out all those background character like stereotypes did not work for him. The girl he asked out accepted his proposal. The girl he fought accepted his feelings assuming that he was in love with her. And remember how he saved that one girl from that monster? Turns out that gaslighting worked to the extreme where he subconsciously built a harem and now he's supposedly trying to defeat the cults where he thinks that everybody is just role playing with him. There are many other instances where he acts as a background character just to complete that bucket list of his. This anime is nothing crazy nor special. At its surface, it's an isekai. But at its core, it's a unique story of a character who doesn't want to be in the spotlight and wants to enjoy his life in mystery around his peers. It doesn't have the animation of something like Jabba's Free Incarnation, but it has a good story. Since the MC doesn't want to live as an MC, we get to see the stories and perspective of other characters and their roles in the story. Piled up with a mix of misunderstandings, it becomes a story that knows it's an isekai and rides on the fact that the whole story is a part of an act for the MC just to roleplay in. Go check it out if you haven't watched it, you might like it.